All right, so what am I talking about, folks? Much like the rest of this year, October was a month of DNFs. And I'm not saying that I won't finish these books before the end of the year, but I feel no sense of obligation or urgency or interest in actually finishing most of the reads that I have here. But in an effort to get things done, because I have wanted to make a video for quite some time, but every single time I'm like, oh, I haven't finished my novel. Oh, I haven't learned how to properly revise and edit throughout the week and be a video editor. And all of these excuses just continue to rise to the surface. And of course, October's excuse was, I haven't finished any of the books that I set out to read. But I will come to you guys just to tell you what I have been reading and how I'm feeling about them. I will start it off with what I did read and finish and did not like whatsoever. That is Sally Rooney's Intermezzo. Now, it was my first Sally Rooney and I was quite eager to see what all of the hype was about. And I understand she has this writing style that one dialogue doesn't get proper quotations and um, she's very relationship heavy and always exploring you know, these class differences and just people coming from various backgrounds. And this one was no different according to that because it, well, a little bit different. She talks about the relationship between, between two brothers who are grieving their recent uh, death of their father. And one brother is very analytical. He plays chess, his name is Ivan, and he's the younger brother. And then the older brother, his name is Peter, and he is on drugs has a bit of a substance abuse problem, but he's also a lawyer and he's in a relationship with a girl who is the same age as her brother. Now, um, these relationships, for anyone who has read it, this is gonna be all of the things you know, but if anyone wants to read it, I will just speak with spoilers so you have been warned. I didn't really find myself as engaged with the relationship between the brothers, and I was more interested in the relationship between Peter and Naomi. And so for most of the book, I'm like, why was this pitched or why was the synopsis all about the brothers? And I know that there was, you know, the contrasting of their relationship and just the way that they were dealing with the grief. So I kept waiting for that, you know, that shoe to drop, so to say. And it, it eventually it did come and it, it didn't hit as much as I had wanted it to, I guess. Um, and for the most part, I was reading it, just trying to figure out what was happening between Peter and Naomi, and just I thought it was so intriguing. The other thing was that Ivan's chapters were so much from the point of view of Margaret, who was, I think that's her name, Margaret. Um, she was the love interest of Ivan, um, and they met at one of his chess matches. And she's, yeah, Margaret, and she's an older woman. So at play, we have Peter, the older brother, in a relationship with a young girl, and then Ivan, the younger brother, in relationship with an older woman. And so I think everything that the book had set up, I was just like waiting for, you know, I don't know <laughs> how to even explain it. I was just waiting for the fireworks of those things to happen. And they did happen, but they they didn't they just didn't land for me. I will say that. And the one part that did actually intrigue me was I think a relation or a scene between um Ivan and I forget who the old relationship Sylvia, I believe, was with Peter. I think it's Peter's ex-girlfriend and Ivan. They have this conversation about math. And I just thought that that was such an intriguing and such a, a profound moment. And it made me want to go back into the book and see if perhaps I was the one just not picking up on everything that Sally Rooney was putting down. The other thing I will say is that a lot of the reviews that I have read after reading this and you know reviews that I've seen on TikTok by the way, I'm now on TikTok. I will leave a link down below. But I thought it was really intriguing 
the reviews way more than the book. And I love sometimes whenever you fin you finish reading a book and the conversations that continue to happen after it and that makes it such an enjoyable read. But I have to say, I still didn't enjoy it. Um, even with all of the reviews that I've been seeing, I still found this such a painful read. Um, and it made me think of that Maya Angelou, Angelo, Dr. Maya Angelo, Angelou, whichever pronunciation, um, where she says that easy reading is damn hard writing. And not to say that Sally Rooney isn't an incredible writer, obviously to write all of this and keep it together and you know get from point A to point B, but it was just a really difficult read for me. And I found myself wanting to put it down every single chapter, but I made it to the end. Here it is, it's on page 258 for anyone who wants to go to it, but um, but why should it be any different? It goes to show Ivan thinks that the difference between truth and lying is complicated. Language doesn't fit onto reality like a toy fitting into a slot. Reality is actually one thing and language something else. Like I just, I love this part so much. And once I read that, I'm like, maybe I didn't read the rest of this book properly and I have to go back, but I will not be going back. So that is how I felt about Sally Rooney's Intermezzo and I will not be picking up anything else by her anytime soon, but that's where we are. Next, I, let me just get this out of the way. This is a book I picked up because I saw it on TikTok again. <laughs> and there is this subset of TikTok called Thought Daughters. And I just thought these women looked so cool. And you know, they thought about things, maybe overthought about things and were readers and fashionable and just really cool looking group of folks. But I have to say, I don't think that I'm a thought daughter because most of these books are very dreamlike and they, um, I don't know, they like float on consciousness and there's just a sense of go with the flow kind of attitude and, th and stream of consciousness and I just couldn't follow. I just, I can't follow these kinds of novels um, because I think I really do value storytelling and connecting the pieces, I want to see a puzzle put together. I don't want to just be out in the abstract of things. And that's a little bit of what this book felt like. I think that it's for people that just want to be in this very dreamlike state and perhaps you're on the beach and you're drinking a fabulous cocktail and just getting lost in the flowery language of this, but it just, it was not for me. So beautiful cover, beautiful gowns. Um, and then next, I'm still not finished with this. I am three quarters of the way, but Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. I, I don't really get sometimes when people hype up things and then you start reading it and you're like, but there's no story. This one, there is a story. There's a mom and a daughter who have a very codependent type relationship. The daughter is having affairs with people in um, in this Spanish town that they are vacationing, I believe. And um, I just, I really don't know what to take away from it, but it's actually quite annoying. And that's the way that I feel about a lot of the books that I've been reading this month in this thought daughter category. And it just feels very whiny almost. Um, not that the characters themselves are whining, but like the the narration, the narrative itself, it feels very, whoa, it's me, and there's no um, end in sight. So not my cup of tea, but hopefully I will finish it in like a week or so, because I literally just read this when I'm sitting on the bus or if I'm waiting for something. Um, and yeah, I have like 20 pages left, but. Um, so those books are, those books, but. Finally, for October, I had The God of the Woods by Liz Moore on my TBR, and I absolutely love Liz Moore. The Unseen World is by far one of my favorite books I've ever read, and I've just started this this week, so I haven't made um, that much progress, only about a quarter of the way, and it's starting to pick up. And I really love how she creates characters because it's not so much of them being likable or not likable, but it makes me feel like I'm in these towns and I'm in the scenario that of whatever was going on. And 
I, I, don't, I just get so swept away before I even realize that I'm being swept away whenever I'm reading Liz Moore. So this one is about, I believe, a girl who gets lost. And there might be other people that get lost, but she's away at camp. And right now I'm in the midst of her parents' narrative or the generation before hers and all of these moving pieces about how this camp came to be. Um, and I'm, I'm loving it. So I'll be back probably later to say that I've finished it and how I felt about the novel overall. But that was my October read. So I just wanted to come up here really quick and do a quick update. I have wanted to make a video almost every week, but because I don't have any stellar kind of updates, I'm like, oh, what can I even talk about? And I'm also in the middle of trying to finish draft four, but every month that I don't finish draft four, I tend to get down on myself and feel as if I'm failing, but I do know that it's gonna take some time to finish it and I just have to be patient. So I just figured the year's almost finished, whatever I have to say, whatever I have to update, whatever I have to give on these videos, I will just start doing that. And yeah, for November, I plan on reading Demon Copperhead with the Well Done Book Club. And I plan on reading one of these Jose Saramago books, which I've just picked up. Um, there is The Cave and Seeing. Seeing is the follow up to blindness and I absolutely adored blindness last year. So we'll see how November goes for reading, but I definitely want to finish draft four before the end of the year. So that's still where all of my focus is. And I do think in the next week, I'm gonna be able to print out the draft that I've been working on so that I can go through and do all of the edits. I also have some character name changes that I have to do, which was really funny because in The God of the Woods, there are two sisters. The oldest sister's name is Delphine. And in this novel that I've been working on, there are two sisters and the oldest, oldest one's name is Delphine. And I have wanted to change her name for a really long time. But now that I'm reading this, it's like added uh, encouragement and added motivation to just change the name the name once and for all but names aren't that easy for me to to come up with and I do think quite a bit about them so yeah we'll see how that ends up turning out but this has turned into a very chatty video and so um, yeah but that is my update and i will definitely be back with more videos very soon i'm working out my content strategy because i really do miss the the consistency of it i was thinking back wow am i'm just talking 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 i was just thinking back to like 10 years ago when i first started making youtube videos over on the storyscape and you know it had gone through so many different name changes but i i miss those days where you would i would read like 40 books a year and make videos every week um reviewing the books and just coming up with ideas so i'm just trying to figure out a way that that's going to make sense in my life right now that i don't get overwhelmed and i still get to feel creative and you know find the balance in it all. So I'm not gonna be reading 40 books a year anymore, but getting around 20 books is pretty good to me right now. So yeah, that's where I am. Happy November. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back with a, oh, also I've changed the name of this channel. As you can see, it's now The Traveling Bibliophile. And a while ago, when I first started traveling, I had this idea and I like made all of these storyboards of what I wanted to do when I was traveling, but then I never got around to doing it. And for some reason in the last couple of months, it just made sense to rebrand uh, the channel and also my Substack, and it's the name of the TikTok, because I think that's the direction that I wanna go into. But I just need to be patient with the creativity and, um, and just keep, practicing and exercising that muscle every day. So we'll see what ends up becoming of these videos, but that is where we are. I'm going to end the video here and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.